When riding a roller coaster, you may experience these different sensations of forces throughout your ride. Some of these moments that the track bends into unique shapes can be defined as coaster elements. Some examples of these include the loop, barrel roll, lift hill, etc. But there is way more than those three elements. There's also the Norwegian loop, Top Gun stall, the bat wing. There are so many coaster elements out there. So in this video, I'll be defining which coaster element is which. So let's get started. So buckle up and get your popcorn ready. The first element normally featured on a roller coaster is the lift hill. This is pretty self-explanatory. Everybody knows that slow ascent up to great heights with the clicking sound, and the ride makes that sound for a reason. It's because of this system called an anti-rollback device. To sum it up short, it is a small piece of the train that slides onto a row of metal teeth on the track, and that causes the clicking sound while climbing up a lift hill. It's also the reason why a train stops on the lift hill and doesn't roll back, but afterwards is the drop, and everybody knows that's the best part of a roller coaster. And if you go even steeper than your normal drop, you get a beyond vertical drop. And this is a normal standard drop that exceeds 90 degrees. A great example is on these Euro Fighter coasters like Hydrosac Casino Pier. And there are also dive coasters that exceed 90 degrees, such as the new Wrath of Ekshasa at Six Flags Great America. It's very easy to spot one. If you see a drop that has track underneath the top of the lift hill, that's a beyond vertical drop. The next term is featured on pretty much most of the roller coasters on planet Earth, the bank turn. The bank turn is self-explainable too. It's a turn where you're on an angle, but if the bank turn surpasses 90 degrees, you get an overbank turn, but if it surpasses 135 degrees, you get a cutback. So moving on, if you keep that momentum going, you get this element called a turnaround. And that is when the roller coaster rises up and ahem, turns around to face the other direction. A lot of old wooden coasters have these such as the racer at Kings Island, but if you keep the momentum past at least 270 degrees, you get a helix. This can also be called a spiral, and there are many variations of this such as the half helix, which is a fancy way of seeing a turnaround, the 270 degree helix like I mentioned earlier, double helix, triple helix, etc. So moving on, another element that is featured on a lot of roller coasters are called camelback hills. These are airtime holes that are shaped in the way that it looks like a camel's back. It does deliver flow to airtime, and I've discussed airtime in another video, which you can check in the card above. But if you take the incline and decline of the hill to nearly 90 degrees straight up and down, you get a top hat. And this is when the coaster rises up vertically, twists, crest the top, and twists back down. There's also top hats with no twist like Stardust Racers. You can notice it by its towering shape. But if you take the top part of it and invert it, you get an inverting top hat, or inside top hat. Who knew? Next up, let's lower the height down for the bunny hop. And this is a short and sharp hill that delivers ejector airtime. You can find these at the end of a roller coaster. If you want to extend the length, you get a speed hill. So that's two for the price of one. If you bank the top part of it to the side, you get this element called an off axis hill. And these are featured on many roller coasters built by RMC such as Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. But if you take two hills and make one of them higher in elevation, you get a double up and the opposite is a double down. If you take an ordinary hill and twist it in the opposite direction at the top, that's called an S hill. And that is when the coaster rises up one direction and twists at the apex towards the other direction. It's very self-explanatory. But if you take a normal airtime hill and have it banked on a steep angle, that's called a wave turn. And these can be prolonged or snappy. So most of the elements that I've talked about have not gone upside down. So what about the ones that do go upside down? The most common inversion is the loop or loop de loop And this is featured on mostly every roller coaster that goes upside down. But if you didn't want to go upside down and wanted to keep the loop shape, you can say hello to the non-inverting loop. Now let's go back to the ordinary loop. If you take it and position it at an angle, that is called an incline loop. So that's three for the price of one. Another common roller coaster inversion is the corkscrew. This is like a barrel roll, but it's shaped like an S hill. It's basically the inversion equivalent of an S hill. Another common inversion is the zero G roll. This is different from your traditional barrel roll by its look and ride experience. If you decide to make the inversion last longer, you get a zero G stall or simply a stall. This gives more hang time than a regular zero-g roll. An inversion with a very similar purpose to a zero-g roll is called an inline twist. The inline twist is very similar to a barrel roll, but the height of it slightly changes and it lasts longer. But if the height doesn't increase, you get a hardline roll. This inversion rolls around the center of the train. A great example can be found on Intamin 10 inversion coasters. Now let's dive into wacky inversions. Let's start with the Cobra roll. A Cobra roll is very easy to spot. It's an inversion made up of a half loop going upwards, a half corkscrew going downwards, and repeats in the opposite direction. If you keep that momentum going in the same direction, that is called a sea serpent roll. Another wacky inversion is the pretzel loop. Just like the Cobra roll, it's also very easy to spot. These are normally found on flying coasters like Manta at SeaWorld Orlando. It has that pretzel shape, and let me tell you, it is crazy intense. It is right up there as one of the most intense inversions I've experienced on a roller coaster. Another very intense inversion is up next with the Batwing. 
This is like the opposite of a cobra roll. It starts with a half corkscrew going up, a half loop going down, and repeats in a different direction. And the bowing on Matu is insane! You can't see during that entire moment since the positives are so high. But we got two more inversions and we are done. So these two are very similar. So let's go to our next element, the dive loop. So if you want your coaster to turn around with an inversion, a great answer to that is a dive loop. This is where the train is rising up while inverting and ends up with the half loop going downwards, and the opposite of that where you rise up and twist out is called an Immelman. In my opinion, I prefer dive loops over Immelmans, and that's because the dive loop on Banshee was my first ever inversion, so it is sentimental. But that is all of the coaster elements that I can think of. So if you found this video interesting, make sure to give it a like. I've said this multiple times, but I'll say it again. Our goal for 2025 is to hit 700 subscribers before the first day of 2026, and I'm putting all my trust in you guys to make us reach to our goal. And you can expect a new video coming out in the next 5 days, so keep that adrenaline pumping, and thanks for watching.